Every morning, millions of students climb into school buses without a second thought. Parents trust them, schools rely on them, and they blend into the background of daily life. But what if I told you that school buses are not just safe, they are the safest vehicles on the road? Statistically, a child is 70 times more likely to arrive at school safely on a bus than in a car. That is not an accident, that is engineering. But here is the strange part, unlike cars, school buses do not have airbags or even seat belts, and yet they are built to withstand crashes that would destroy smaller vehicles. So how is that possible, and what makes school buses so uniquely safe? To answer that we need to look at where it all started in the early 20th century. History. School transportation once prioritized practicality over safety. If it could move students, it was good enough. What started as horse-drawn kid hacks, wooden wagons with open seating, soon evolved into motorized buses that were little more than modified trucks with wooden cabins bolted onto their frames. These early buses were rolling death traps tall, narrow and dangerously unstable. A sharp turn could send them tumbling like a stack of crates. In a crash, there was no steel frame to absorb the impact, only splintering wood and flimsy sheet metal crumpling like foil. Exposed fuel tanks made fires a constant threat, where even a spark could turn a minor accident into a deadly inferno. Why were they built this way? Because there were no regulations. Every manufacturer built buses differently, with inconsistent materials, braking systems, and safety features. A child's safety depended entirely on where they lived and what kind of bus their district could afford. Change came in the late 1920s. The first national safety standards introduced stronger materials, better seating layouts, and the now iconic school bus yellow, chosen for maximum visibility. For the first time, student safety became a priority. Still, those early buses were a far cry from the machines we see today. So what changed and how did engineers turn these dangerous wagons into the safest vehicles on the road? The technical breakdown. The first real step toward making buses safer was structural reinforcement. Early models used thin wood or sheet metal, offering almost no crash protection. Engineers introduced steel frames, creating an internal skeleton that absorbed and distributed impact forces evenly. In rollovers, the frame held its shape instead of collapsing. To reduce tipping, buses were redesigned with wider wheelbases, lower centers of gravity, and better suspension. Rollovers became less likely and stability improved. But structure was only half the equation. What about protecting passengers inside? That is where one of the most common questions arises if buses are so safe, why no seat belts? The answer is compartmentalization. Instead of seat belts, engineers designed the entire interior as a crash system. High-backed, closely spaced, energy-absorbing seats form padded compartments. In a collision, students hit cushion barriers rather than hard surfaces. Unlike seat belts, which only work if worn correctly, compartmentalization is passive, always working. Physics plays a role too. Buses weigh up to 15 times more than cars, so deceleration in crashes is gradual, reducing passenger impact. Engineers also improved emergency exits. Old buses had just one rear door. If blocked, there was no escape. Today's buses have multiple exits, side doors, roof hatches, and push-out windows. Modern buses also use interlock systems, preventing the engine from starting if exits are open. Driver visibility improved as well. Early blind spots made children near the front vulnerable. Cross-view mirrors and, more recently, 360 degrees cameras provide drivers with full awareness during pick-ups and drop-offs. Yet the biggest danger was not inside the bus, it was outside. Children were often struck by cars while crossing roads. To stop this, buses added swing-out stop arms with flashing red lights, legally requiring cars to stop. Many also use crossing gates, forcing kids to walk in front of the bus where drivers can see them. Railroad crossings were another hazard. Tragedies led to strict protocols buses must stop, open doors, and listen for trains before crossing. Some modern models even use GPS-based train detection systems. With all these changes, school buses became vastly safer. But how do they compare worldwide? International comparison. In the US, school buses are designed around compartmentalization, reinforced steel frames, and strict traffic laws. But in places like the United Kingdom, Australia, and Canada, the approach is different. School buses there are required to have seat belts, based on the idea that even with compartmentalization, restraints provide an extra layer of protection. Bus size and structure also vary depending on the country. In the US, school buses are large, high-capacity vehicles built to transport dozens of students at once. But what about countries with different infrastructure? In Japan, school buses are smaller, almost van-like, 
Due to narrow streets and shorter travel distances, they often include seat belts and extensive pedestrian safety features because children frequently walk or bike for the last part of their journey. Some countries do not use dedicated school buses at all. Instead, students take public transportation. In much of Europe, students commute on trains, subways and municipal buses. The upside, schools do not need to run their own fleets. The downside, students must navigate busy city streets, make transfers and travel alongside the general public. That increases their exposure to traffic accidents and other risks. Traffic laws also play a key role. In the US and Canada, when a school bus extends its stop arm, drivers are legally required to stop, even on multi-lane roads. But in the UK and Germany, that law does not exist. Cars are allowed to pass stopped school buses as long as they do so cautiously. Instead of strict stop laws, these countries focus on pedestrian safety, while mark crosswalks and lower speed limits near schools. The burden falls more on the students to be aware of their surroundings. Some of these differences come down to infrastructure, others are cultural. Either way, no two school transportation systems are exactly alike. Some prioritize impact protection, others focus on preventing accidents in the first place. But at what point does adding more safety stop making a real difference? School buses are already the safest vehicles on the road, with crash survival rates far exceeding any other mode of passenger transportation. Yet every few years, new proposals emerge more restraints, more sensors, more regulations. Is there a point where these improvements become unnecessary? When does the cost of new safety measures outweigh the benefits? School bus controversy. One of the biggest debates in school bus safety is seat belts. Should they be mandatory? Some US states say yes, most say no. Their reasoning compartmentalization already protects students from crashes and adding seat belts would not change much. On top of that, retrofitting every school bus with seat belts would cost billions. And according to studies, the impact on student safety would be minimal. School bus crash fatalities are already incredibly rare. So is it worth spending billions on a feature that might only save a handful of lives per decade? Probably not. Beyond seat belts, automation is another frontier. Some experts believe self-driving school buses could eliminate human error entirely. No distracted driving, no misjudged turns, no reckless decisions. But self-driving technology is not perfect, and trust is a problem. Would parents be comfortable putting their children on a bus with no human driver? Probably not. A more realistic future is AI, assisted safety features, think automatic braking, pedestrian detection lane keeping technology. These systems do not replace human drivers, they help them. Over time, they can make school buses even safer than they already are. Then there is the growing push for electric school buses. They are quieter, cleaner and cheaper to maintain, but they are not cheap to buy. A single electric school bus can cost three times as much as a traditional diesel model. Many school districts simply cannot afford them. No matter how school buses evolve, whether through automation, electrification or new regulation, one question remains how much safety is enough, and at what point does it become too much? Over the past century, school buses transformed from wooden wagons into some of the safest vehicles ever built, engineers reinforced frames, redesigned interiors, and improved escape systems, all while ensuring safety worked passively, without depending on passengers. Fatality rates remain far lower than other forms of travel, but debates continue should we add seat belts, automation, or electrification. Some say these bring only small improvements, others insist no cost is too high to save lives. Whatever the future holds, one thing is certain. Engineers will keep asking the same question, how do we make the safest vehicle on the road even safer?